All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to answer a beautiful question asked by one of my subscribers. Namely, are there functions such that the inverse of the derivative equals to the derivative of the inverse? And surprisingly, the answer is yes. So watch this video to find out. Now, as our first step, as usual, let's guess that the function is of the form f of x equals c x to the n. So a typical power function. And first of all, it's just a guess. So if it works, then great. If not, we would have tried something else. But also, it kind of makes sense because the derivative of a power function is still a power function, and the inverse of a power function is still a power function. And conversely, for the derivative of the inverse, we would still have a power function. So still at least two functions of the same type which might make you guess they might be equal. So this is a good guess, actually. And now let's calculate the derivative. So f prime of x by the power rule or the pa value, this gives you cn times x to the n minus 1. And now we want to find the inverse. So if y equals cn x to the n minus 1, this gives you x to the n minus 1 equals y over cn. And therefore, now taking the n minus first root, we get x equals y over cn to the 1 over n minus 1. And assume x and y are positive, just so that you do have an inverse. And therefore, what we get, we get that the inverse of the derivative is just x over cn to the 1 over n minus 1. So that's on the one hand. On the other hand, let's now calculate the inverse and then the derivative. So I would like to remind you f of x is cx to the n. So to find the inverse, y equals cx to the n. So x to the n equals y over c. And so x is the nth root of y over c. So in other words, f inverse of x is x to the 1 over n over c to the 1 over n. And then just differentiate. So take the derivative of this to get f inverse prime of x equals, so still the constant 1 over c to the 1 over n, but now 1 over n, x to the 1 over n minus 1. So in other words, what we get, the derivative of the inverse equals 1 over n c to the 1 over n, almost like Nancy, it's very nc, and then x to the, let's say, 1 minus n over n. All right, so this is the second thing, which I didn't close. But now we have two formulas for um, f prime inverse and for f inverse prime. And now we just need to set those equal. So I think part four, so we get f prime inverse equals f inverse prime. And therefore, what we get is x to the uh, 1 over n minus 1 over this constant, so cn to the 1 over n minus 1 equals 1, so x to the 1 minus n over n over n c to the 1 over n. And therefore, those are two power functions, and they're equal if and only if the powers are equal. So in our second step, what we do we just set 1 over n minus 1 equals 1 minus n over n. So in other words, what we get, n equals n minus 1 times 1 minus n. But that becomes, uh, if you want, minus n minus 1 times n minus 1. So n equals minus n minus 1 squared. 
And this actually says something interesting. First of all, n cannot be positive because if this is positive, this is negative, and then we get a contradiction. But not only that, we will see soon that there are actually no real solutions because we can expand this out, n equals minus n squared plus 2n minus 1. So n squared plus n minus 2n, so n squared minus n plus 1 equals 0. And then you can solve this using the quadratic formula. So n equals 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4 over 2. And therefore, what we get is n equals 1 plus or minus square root of minus 3 over 2, which gives us now the following n equals 1 plus or minus square root of 3i over 2. So as I said, no real solutions actually, but there is a very familiar complex solution because while this is, it's just either e i pi over three or e minus i pi over three. So the exponents that work, what they look like, they are on the unit circle in the complex plane, but with angle pi over three, and minus pi over three. How cool is that? So this is e i pi over three, and this is e minus i pi over three. Great, so we already solved n. So n was just e plus or minus i pi over three. And then all we need to do is now go back and solve for c. Because if you look back here, well, we now find that the exponents are equal and all you need is to figure out when the denominator is equal. So that's now step three. So essentially what we need to solve for is a Cn to the one over n minus one equals n nor Nancy and c to the one over n. But remember, n, we already know what this is. So we just need to solve for c. All right. And so let's raise this, for instance, uh, or let's split it up. So c to the one over n minus one, n to the one over n minus one equals n times c to the one over n. And then let's put this c there and then this n there. So in the end, we get c of 1 minus 1 over n minus 1 minus 1 over n equals n 1 minus 1 over n minus 1. I get claro que c. Si. And it's not 0. Sorry, my computer says, always wants to say 0, but 0 is not invertible. OK. And then, and then putting this on a common denominator, so n minus n minus 1 over n times n minus 1 equals n, okay, n minus 1 minus 1 over n minus 1. All right, and this beautifully simplifies to c to the 1 over n times n minus 1 equals n to the n minus 2 over n minus 1. But the nice thing is, well, there's a common factor of n minus 1. So raising this to the n minus first power, we then get that c to the 1 over n equals n to the n minus 2. So c just becomes n to the n minus 2 to the nth power. So n to the n minus 2 times n. And therefore, what we get, we have finally our solutions. So we found our n, and now we have our c. So I think step uh, four, so at least what do some of the solutions look like? Well. Um, we have our functions are of the form c x to the n, where again n is e plus or minus i pi over 3 and c is again with that n, n times n minus 2 times. And therefore, what does that look like? So for instance, in the positive case, it's e i pi over 3 e i pi over 3 minus 2 times e i pi over 3 
or the negative case. So plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. All right, and those are again, very non-obvious solutions. And in fact, you can check if you want that in fact, in that case, we have F, inver F prime inverse equals F inverse prime. And with that said, if you like this and you wanna see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.